episode 94, Did God Make You a Finished Product? You're listening to the very best podcast in the world on health, wealth, and happiness. Please remember to leave a review and share with all your friends and family. And here is your host, Lars Hilson. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats, <laughs> cats and dogs, that's how much it's raining outside currently, uh, and it's miserable. Um, and so therefore, uh, you know, welcome to <laughs> the very best podcast in the world, your only source in the universe for personal supremacy through health, wealth, and happiness. Now, I hope you all have stopped procrastinating uh, after this devious three-part mega episode that we aired on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, where we went through, you know, where does procrastination start? Uh, you know, how, uh, what are some solutions to uh, ridding your life of procrastination and the extraordinary results that you experience once you have gotten rid and broken the therefore created cycle of procrastination. That leads us to a very interesting question in that uh, whether or not God made you a finished product. And uh, God, in this case, obviously stands for, well, essentially, whatever you believe in. You know, there's this fun thing that says it's for, uh, God stands for gold, oil, and drugs uh, for the intelligence services. Uh, just, you know, as a side note, uh, as a kind of funny takeaway. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, I hope none of you actually think you're perfect, and uh, I hope that you, after listening to this, become a bit more humble uh, in trying to run after perfection. Because uh, what we're going to be discussing in this episode is uh, the question, or more or less the fact, whether perfection actually exists and whether or not perfection can actually exist and is it therefore worth striving for something that doesn't and cannot exist so uh you know, it, it sounds listening to myself it sounds like you know I'm, I'm trying to feed you despair uh but you know really a while ago we made this uh we aired this episode called um uh you know good enough uh, and I think, you know, that's something worth, uh, worth listening to because there comes a period in, uh, whatever you're creating or doing where you just have to admit that anything, any work you're going to additionally invest is not going to, is, you know, is going to be exponentially, the amount of work you have to put into it is going to be exponentially higher than the result you're going to achieve, Right. Uh, and I had to learn that with bitter tears, you know, with a lot of stuff that I published and wrote and coded and whatever, you know, it was like, <laughs> you had a finished website and you were like, well, but that pixel is, eh. you know, and so you invested a significant amount of time into something which, you know, at the end of the day, you were the only one to really notice because the thing itself was 95% perfect. And the last 5%, nobody on God's earth would have noticed it except for yourself, because you're trying to achieve perfection. However, achieving these la these final 5%, you know, took you weeks and therefore set your project back by weeks. You know, and the question is, can you afford that, right? Uh, for a minor improvement to invest weeks and weeks on, um, you know, setting your project back or whatever you're publishing, right? And 
that's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself. But uh, yeah, you know, again, go back to that good enough episode. That's really insightful. Now that we have the housekeeping bit done, uh, let's get started. Uh, so in this episode, uh, we're going to go over a few topics, which I'm going to briefly introduce. Number one is uh, humans are full of imperfections. Number two, humans are a work in progress, as is everything else. Number three, everything, uh, every being is subject to evolution. Uh, I should qualify that, and then I would say everything is subject to evolution. Next is technological advancement uh, in the past hundred years. We're going to have a look at you know humanity's advancement. Uh, and merging technology with biology, which is going to be the consequential future. I think is consequential actually a word? I don't know. But it'll be the integration between or the merger between technology and biology, really the most interesting bit. So let's get started. Uh, humans are full of imperfections. And I think, you know, if you really are going to be honest to yourself, you're going to find tons of imperfections. And I think a week or two ago, we made an exercise about embracing imperfections, where I went into that in detail. Now, the question is, um, you know, are you going to work on getting rid of those imperfections? Th those are going to be the kind of uh, um, your self imperfections. But uh, looking at it from a biological sense, and our evolution in the past, you know, few thousand years where we dropped our hair, you know, we inhabited climate zones that were not to be inhabited by us, you know, as, um, uh, as humans, uh, <laughs> as, as humans, uh, you know, we live in the unforgiving deserts. Uh, we live in the unforgiven uh, polar regions of this earth, you know, we have to take advantage of, uh, you know, technology and other means to protect ourselves from, uh, you know, climate and uh, environmental impacts that we weren't built to be exposed to. And, you know, so this is very interesting to look at it from a grander perspective, from a biological perspective, you know, and were it not for technology, which we're going to go into later on, would we be able to inhabit those zones? Would our population have grown to, you know, almost 8 billion people? Uh, you know, and that's a very important question to ask. You know, of course, other um, creeds and species benefit from our technology, but they're also negatively impacted in a lot of ways. So that's something really to keep in mind, which leads us to the determination that humans are a work in progress, as is everything else. And uh, this is very interesting in that, you know, even if you look back as much as uh, 500 years, how much our you know, life has been enriched by technological advances and how much our ego, our human ego has set us back, you know, technologically, because all of a sudden we believed that, uh, <laughs> you know, the church believed that, uh, you know, no one should be able to read and write unless you were you know, of an elite class and, or, you know, of a religious creed or whatever it was at the end of the day, history lessons are kind of foggy. Uh, but there have been multiple um, times when humanity has set itself back from a development perspective. You know, look at the pyramids, for instance. No, I'm afraid they weren't, they weren't built by aliens. I'm sorry to have to uh, kind of disrupt your, uh, yeah, your beliefs there. Uh, I think they were human, uh, made by humans. Um, but, uh, you know, look at the, look at that technical, um, finesse 
that was exposed and projected and used there, you know, and then look a few thousand years on when Europe was, you know, living in, in, uh, clay huts and small houses and, uh, you know, that kind of, um, description. So, uh, let's get on to the evolution or the work in progress of everything else. You know, it's like even from an environmental perspective, you know, be it man-made, be the climate change as it's now called, uh, the global climate change, be it man-made or not, you know, there are species, uh, which, you know, just suffer. I just have to look outside. We've got, uh, tons of birch trees, um, around the house and during the normal and not out of the ordinary spring and uh, autumn storms, these things will just, you know, fall over like twigs, right? Because the water supply is not, or the groundwater is not as high as it used to be. Therefore, you know, their roots start to have trouble nurturing the trees. Therefore, they carry less foliage. Therefore, you know, they uh, become victim to uh, different kinds of fungi and therefore they are weakened generally and therefore during a storm which they would have otherwise survived they just fall over you know and not just one it's uh, you know these trees are between 25 and 50 years old uh, so they're very mature but you know still uh, they're weakened by the lack of groundwater because we have a shift uh, in the um, in in the uh, global climate let's not call it a climate crisis uh, because i'm you know we're i think we're far from that but you know something is changing uh, i'm not really uh, convinced that the climate change is man-made but that's a different story this just you know leads us to conclude that pretty much everything is subject to change you know and uh Every, therefore, everything is subject to evolution because despite the fact that, you know, these birch trees are falling over, there are other trees that will take their place, which will adapt more proficiently to the new climate situation that we have, you know, and um, where I'm from in the north of Germany, you know, we still have the these old rounded stones, uh, which, you know, are sometimes weigh tons and tons and tons, which were, which are reminisce of, uh, reminisce? <laughs> well, uh, they're still there from the last ice age, which wasn't too long ago. And, you know, that went all the way up to Northern Germany and lower. So, uh, you know, that being said, evolution isn't only true if you believe in Darwin and the, the finches beaks and you know, whatever, uh, evolution happens everywhere. And in some cases it happens quicker. And in some cases it happens slower. So for us, for instance, who now live very long and healthy lives, evolution takes longer because our lives have been elongated right? We live longer, therefore a generation takes longer, therefore the, the genetic information we give to the next generation takes longer to then kind of spread. And that's going to be a problem if life is, you know, prolonged beyond that, because uh, evolution is going to be slowed down. Let's get to the fun part, though. <laughs> and uh, back to the question, did God make you a finished product? No, he didn't. Uh, that's the point you're going to take away from this because uh, what we have seen is the well the in, the longevity that we have that we're experiencing uh, through technology, right? Through technological advancement. Uh, for instance, when I was in the financial sector, that was about I think I left in 2005 ish, something like that. Um, the life insurance companies were. Uh, calculating the median age of a girl born on that day to be 102, you know, not 80 anymore. And this is, you know, what, 80, 80 years away uh, that this comes to fruition. So 
the expectations of life being extended still is increasing quite dramatically, which leads to all sorts of problems. But let's not get into that because we're currently at the technological advancement. <clears throat> but technological advancement, sorry, uh, isn't only true for that, you know, because looking back uh, approximately 100 years, right, when the 100 to 150 years, that was about where the uh, industrial revolution, uh, as it was co uh, coined later on, started. Uh, and since then, we've made quantum jumps in the advancement of technology. I mean, you know, uh, that thing you're using to write text messages and uh, shit talk to friends um, over very, very long distances uh, is also capable of giving you access to all of humanity's knowledge at your fingertip. You know, and that's something insanely impressive. Uh, we have to keep in mind. Now, the thing is, you know, we're not putting this device down. A lot of us aren't. You know, I'm one of those people. Uh, I have it in my pocket pretty much until I go to bed from when I wake up. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I use, you know, almost a battery charge per day because that thing is constantly running, answering questions taking notes, you know, about this podcast and many other ideas that I have and collect, uh, you know, those cloud computers, those ginormous beasts, which store so much data are, you know, making sure that nothing of what I produce content wise gets lost. And, um, uh, you know, this is all, this has all happened. Uh, within the last 100 to 150 years, you know, flight uh, from when the Wright brothers uh, launched their uh, first endeavor to, uh, you know, now passenger airliners with, uh, I don't know, what is it, 500, over 500 seats, you know, um, very efficiently flying people from one destination to another. Well, you know, not during the Rona, but before that, you know, and when things may or may not become normal again. Uh, you know, it's impressive to see these ginormous pieces of infrastructure that we've created and which have helped us advance so quickly. You know, uh, the fiberglass wires which transport our data from one uh, end of the planet to the other in milliseconds. That's pretty fucking impressive. You have to wrap your head around that. You know, it's like you can send your WhatsApp message, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, or a kitten video uh, fr through, uh, you know, from YouTube from one end to the, of the planet to the other in milliseconds. You know, just imagine, like, uh, what, a hundred years ago? Well, not even probably. It was uh, Morse code, and before that, it was a fucking letter that had to be, you know, written, brought to the post office, brought from there to you know, the harbor where it got put on a ship, where it got shipped over to the other part of the world where the postman had to deliver it, you know, and meanwhile, we're transferring that same amount of information within milliseconds. You know, talk about efficiency right? <laughs> and lack of environmental impact. But, you know, it's um, something uh, that we have to get used to that technology is going to grow exponentially. And that's where we get to the point that eventually we're going to see a merger between technology and biology. Now, uh, Elon Musk has presented his Neuralink idea. And uh, while I'm not really convinced uh, that that is going to be um, the thing that's going to deliver the breakthrough, I think that we need to biologically connect to the network and ideally feed our brains into the collective. And I think then we will reach the next level of being able to talk to each other. We're going to experience, you know, maybe if it's not commercialized immediately, like the internet was, we're going to uh, experience a new age of truth and honesty. Because beside talking to someone, well, there won't be really a need to verbally talk to someone because you can transmit thoughts. 
But if it's open source, we're going to see very cool advancements in terms of that there is no, there are no lies and deceit anymore. You know, and while this might may be utopian, there is also a dystopian side to it, right? Because uh, we're going to go into this age of uh, what was a Tom Cruise movie called? I forget uh, where you know the crimes were were predicted and. Uh, I think you know there's going to be we're going to be ha we're going to have to be very careful both with this AI uh, artificial intelligence and the merger between managing uh, you know or merging technology and biology and I think a lot of ethicists are going to have to wrap their heads around it because uh, we're also going to be talking about the fall of privacy to a degree. You know, if we see immediate commercialization like we have with the internet, uh, we're going to have to have society adapt to it very quickly. We're going to have to have society understand what is going on, which is going to be very difficult. And uh, we're going to be one step closer, I think, to being a society without borders, without racial uh, this, or without racism, without nationalist fervors, uh, you know, without a lot of the things that are keeping humanity from advancing to its full potential as we are at the moment. Now, philosophy class is over. <laughs> God has not made you a finished product, uh, despite the fact that you know, a lot of people believe that they are perfect. They're not. Uh, we're all vulnerable to something and susceptible to outside influence. And I think that's something we have to get used to in our lifetime. And I think a few generations to come. In that sense, uh, wrap your head around that. Um, if you have, uh, you know, someone who is going to be interested in this, make sure to share this episode with them, right? And have a successful day. Subscribe to this podcast. And uh, if you've had your successful day already, I wish you a good night. And I'm going to see you tomorrow when it's exercise day. And we're going to be talking about lifelong learning. Stay tuned. Peace out.